could just, uh, you all could just say your names. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Vin Diesel, Zoe Saldana, and Chris Pratt. Look at them. They're famous. <laughs> all right, so we're going to ask. So first of all, we want to thank you guys for coming to the very center of the nerd universe here at Google. Yes, A home. wise choice. Everyone's Knock a lot of them out right, off the, right out of the gate. Yeah. <clears throat> Um, so we're going to ask you some questions. Um, okay, so this, this movie, we all saw it, uh, I saw it last week. It was amazing. It's really, it's, it's, I would say it's almost like 95% a comedy. It's really like a fun, I mean, the tone is like super light and fun. Like, is it hard to keep it loose when you know that it's, you know, they're spending like a million dollars a minute? I'm not good with math, but something like that. It was like around that. a million dollars a second, I think. <laughs> Somewhere oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah. yeah. Um, you have those figures. You know... It is, it, it is a little difficult juggling tone, I think, when you have comedy and action and drama and all those things in the same movie. A lot of times when movies try to have all three of those things, they essentially fail at all three. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, movies that are trying to be funny and have action and have drama oftentimes fail at all of those things. And so, you know, it is a little scary because you're there and, like, you know, you're surrounded by alien makeup extras and you're on this amazing set outdoors you know it's literally costing at least thousands of dollars a minute if not yeah, more yeah. <laughs> and um and they're like okay no do the running man more and you're like, ah, like oh my god like if this doesn't work it's gonna be super embarrassing you know um so so it is it is a little tough but i think tone is something that's like we just have to sort of we just sort of have to trust James in the post production process that he's going to polish it and test it and make sure that the comedy's working but not overshadowing the action and not not overshadowing the drama. I mean, I like to liken it to like gastronomy, you know, like those kind of dishes that shouldn't work together but do and right. it's the result of a chef knowing just how much caviar to mix with the lollipop and the <laughs> and the cat food. The gastronomy that tastes the so gassy. good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, cuz a lot of times it is weird when you're like, "Oh wait, now the raccoon's crying. What are we uh, you know." Right. You, but it worked. But it works. Yeah, <laughs> I think I think as long as the ingredients are really organic and fresh and, yeah. and you and you have it in the hands of a good chef, they can like give you a dish that you're not used to eating but you're like <laughs> God damn it, that's really good. I, and I, you know. Are you hungry, dude? Did you eat before? I did not eat. <laughs> <laughs> Every time I only use food metaphors, you know I'm hungry. All right. Have any of you uh, auditioned for any of these like superhero, uh, uh, huge superhero comic book kind of things before? I know, Ben, you've been in a, a billion action movies. <laughs> now, this is the first. Uh, the first Marvel film, the first superhero film I've done. And there was like a there was like a social media wave to get you involved in a Marvel mm -hmm. movie. Was that how this came about? Yeah, it happened last year. Um, it was at Comic Con. I was at Comic Con and I was there for Hall, I was at Hall H for a Riddick, and someone in an Iron Man outfit asked me the question, <laughs> "How did I envision my relationship with Marvel would be?" And, uh, and then the next day, Kevin Feige was there, and they asked him the same question. And then two weeks later, Kevin Feige called me and said, you want to play a tree? <laughs> <laughs> to which you said, I am... I am Groot. Yeah. 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 Yes. Now, how, many, how many times did you have to say that? I mean, did you, <laughs> was it like, uh, hey, just come in and give us six, and then we're good? Thousands. <laughs> Thousands. Yeah, I mean, the cool thing about James Gunn is that he really was invested in this movie. And I was lucky because they had already shot so much of the movie. And when I went into the ADR booth, I was loving what I was seeing. I was loving these characters. I oh, so you got to play off the scenes that were are you I already got saw. To play oh, off cool. All of them. So I'm loving Star Lord. I'm loving Gamora. I'm seeing these guys in action. And I thought that there was only going to be three words when I came in there, and there was a 50-page document with <laughs> I am Groot on the left-hand side, and then whatever he wanted to say. I know some of you, I mean, if this is the nerd capital, <laughs> you do know what a flora colossus is, and it is a Groot. And essentially, people that are familiar with him can understand him, but if you aren't familiar with him because he has a hardened larynx, you can't understand the nuance of his speech. So James Gunn really wanted to give me the line, and then the process with trying to make that line fit into the three monosyllabic words of 
I am Groot. <laughs> so like, so so speaking Groot, like say if you wanted to say, uh, I'll, I'll take the check, how would that sound? <laughs> Awkward. <laughs> All right, all right. No, 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 you, no. you gave us one. That was good. I gave you one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Come on. What is this? <laughs> um, Zoe, you, uh, between Star Trek, uh, this, and Avatar, like, you're in space more than you're not in space. <laughs> um, is that something, like, is it hard for you to go, like, from that to, okay, now you're in Pittsburgh with Christian Bale, and it's a serious <laughs> scene. Um, I kind of wished I was in space when I went to Pittsburgh. That <laughs> 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 was, I, I know. No. <laughs> No, no, listen, listen, no, 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 the content of what we were doing was so not fun. When you work, when, when you work in a movie like this, you're kind of skipping to work and you're just sort of bitching and moaning about the long hours of makeup and the 18 hour shoots or whatever. When you do a film like Out of the Furnace, we can be shooting it in Miami, in South Beach. It's still not going to be fun and you're still gonna wish that you were in space. The content was really heavy. Sure. Nobody made a joke. And everybody was like a method actor. So I'm the only one like walking to work like and Wipe sitting in the makeup trailer. <laughs> yeah. And I have like Christian Bale here and Casey Affleck there. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like it was just like, oh my God, I'm so like. So it was good when after that movie, you know, and I was very proud of it. I saw it too. It's good to do yeah, things good. here on Earth sometimes. And because um, <laughs> then when you do get to go on space, you're like, yeah. <laughs> was sci-fi doing all that stuff? Was sci-fi something? I love Pittsburgh, by the way. You guys have so <laughs> many awesome bridges. And the Andy Warhol Museum is there. <laughs> by the way, don't see in a Miller me, please. <laughs> But Christian Bale and uh, Casey Affleck, not so much. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but was sci-fi something that you've been interested in, like, were you originally when you started acting, or did it just kind of come to you? No, I was, I, I grew up in a household uh, where my mother, if she wasn't watching science fiction, she was reading it. And, and um, I remember I read Dune when I was very, very young, and I was Lady Jessica for many Halloweens. I was a Bene Gesserit. And um, <laughs> so uh, I just, there was something about the curiosity of what can happen there. And uh, having a lot of respect through my mother's eyes for the writers and creators that were able to imagine the unimaginable. I just thought they, it was such a bold decision. And, and, and they were so, they were originals, you know? And um, being an underdog myself, I kind of felt an affinity always with people that were able to go outside of the norm and and see life for what it truly truly is which is a complete blank canvas uh, so filmmakers like JJ Abrams James Cameron Steven Spielberg are not people that I would have thought that a girl from Queens would get to work with in the first you know seven or eight years of my acting career and yet I did and um, and I was very grateful for it and then I connected all the dots and it has to do with our affinity with space and I'm okay with that. I, I did have a fear when, when James Gunn came calling. They come calling, I, I swear to God. I always go, this will be the last. And then it's like, you got, you got so-and-so. It's like, what do you want? You're gonna be you green, be green now, now instead of blue. <laughs> All right, I'll do it. <laughs> yeah, that brings up, is it hard to play a green person or a blue person? <clears throat> well, because I'm a little, I'm a little lazy and hard. Um, I like motion capture better because you guys get to do all the hard work and I just, I do my work and I, I put it all out there. Uh, but then I, I walk away and then it's all done in two years. I can post and things like that. Uh, for Guardians of the Galaxy, like I have to sit there for five hours and, and it's not cool. Like I have ADD, I have OCD. <laughs> like I, <laughs> I'm in England, I'm away from home. <laughs> so it's just, it's, it, it, it's still dark. And you go in and you're getting your makeup done, and you come out and it's still dark. Like the day hasn't even started. And then you have like 16 hours worth of work to do. Um, and you, you can't complain because everybody's just so happy to be there. Yeah. So it's, <laughs> <laughs> it was a little Except challenging. Um, so we were, we were watching it. We were, just, uh, we were just like, so does every actor know karate now? Like it seems like, did you guys know any martial arts before this or did you have to learn it? Uh, for the... 
I mean, you know, when you were in the booth, I am Groot, just doing it for fun. <laughs> no, but I mean, it seems like you guys were doing a lot of lot of martial arts. They had to really dumb down my martial arts skill. Oh, yeah. Uh, no. I'm, a, I'm a tenth degree black belt okay. uh, in every martial art. Um, no, uh, yeah, I like you know did kung fu when I was like I think in third grade, so I was pretty much qualified to. Uh, didn't to didn't go kick she, ass in space? Didn't she kick you pretty hard a couple times? Yeah. Yep, she did. Uh, you know, she's got these. She got these. She's really a very powerful athlete, and uh, and a lot. You know, people don't understand that power does isn't come from brute strength. It comes from grace, and it comes from like clean lines. You know what I mean? Like, like you see the most graceful um, mixed martial arts fighters, and they're not like big muscle heads. They're actually like almost like ballerinas. You know what I mean? And she's a ballerina, so she whacked me once in the ribs. I think I push on it, it hurts still, so it might be broken. I don't know. Yeah. It's been like <laughs> it's been like a year, so I think she broke it. Um, <laughs> But uh, yeah, sh she was wearing these boots too. They're kind of like high heel boots, but like instead of having a heel, they have a sole, like a, a thin, like rubber hard sole at the bottom, and then a heel. There's it, they're kind of interesting, like a triangle, and then uh, she sort of <laughs> sort of drove that triangle, uh, I guess, into my diaphragm lung. Diaphragm into your diaphragm. Yeah, well, I'd say through my diaphragm, it more into my lung. Uh, yeah, it was good. She just she whacked me good, you know. But it's kind of nice because. But That's we just, told him. It's like, do you want to wear your guard, your safeguard? No, 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 I got it, I got it. Uh, yeah, yeah, but, yeah, yeah, everybody yeah. came, James Gunn, the stunt coordinator, everybody. And I was like, seriously, Chris, you don't want to wear it? Are you sure? He's like, oh, come on. It's like, we know, we know our marks, and all right. Well, but, <laughs> so were you not supposed to make actual contact? And... No, you usually, you, you don't. You're not oh. supposed to. And, and, but ben does. He when does. you work he, with he, a he director. <laughs> 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 When you work with someone like like James Gunn, he'll go like, "Well, you just get a little closer, just get a little closer," and oh, kind of like it's looking so, at each other. It seems kind of like you're blaming James and, <laughs> and me for like not wearing some protective shield. <laughs> Look, the thing is, is when it's true. when got when people do stunts and when you do physical activities, you just get bumps and bruises. Sure. And the yes. fact that the fact that I got uh, one from Zoe is seems for some reason to be remarkable because she's a female but she just happens to be another one of the people who did her own did a lot of her own stunts and so yes. you know you just get bumps and bruises when you do these things and and my, my the you know the, the funnier the, story the tougher bump I got was her kicking me in the ribs yeah do you now you you there's a lot of talk about how how in shape you got for this and how how you know. I go on like be more specific what exactly you that? you got you you uh, I don't know you just got totally ripped, uh, you know, Mr. Universe pictures. style. Um, now, do you now have to get back into comedy shape? Is there is there a comedy weight that you have to, to get to? Been, uh, I've been doing some extensive comedy weight training, yeah. You want to train with us? Actually, yeah, we, train train, us, we can train you. We're good. We're right around in that good comedy weight. Yeah, I know. I've yeah definitely started incorporating uh, fun things and tasty things back into my life. Um, and I, that's like just sort of the natural balance, you know, like you work very, very hard. But it really, it, you only live in that Im impeccable shape for maybe 24 hours. <laughs> you know, seriously, it's like several months built up to like the. It's like that a. It's like an orchid right? that that blooms and dies on the same day. You know, it's like care and concern, watering, and the perfect amount of sunshine for six months, and then it just. Mm -hmm. And you take a selfie. <laughs> <laughs> and then you slowly, the orchid falls off and. And you were sucking in the whole movie. Uh, pretty much, yeah, pretty much, yeah. No, I have to say, um, Chris went through an arduous, like, and very strict uh, and purposeful uh, uh, process, transformation process that, that I had the gift of witnessing. And he did it primarily for, like, health reasons. And, you know, he's a father as well, so he wants to be a good example, not just to his family, but also to people out there that it is possible you could do it. You could be the guy, the chubby guy from Parks and Recs, and then all of a sudden... You could just be on some crummy TV sudden, show on NBC, yeah. and then... A superhero in a Marvel movie. And it's just, it's the message, the positive message that's sent out there <laughs> it's really great. Where's my money? <laughs> I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna go on that diet. The uh, get cast in a huge uh, blockbuster. <laughs> yeah, <diet>. yeah. <laughs> it's a good one. Kind of like a good the, one. you're gonna do a nude scene diet, probably. Yeah. Does anybody, uh, do we want to open it up to questions? Anybody? Uh, um, but Ben, the wor working out thing is, uh, what's, you have to do that all the time. I imagine. Do you? 
I mean, is it like he, for you, is it like his process of like, it's the one day but that's it, perfect? For everyone, in some ways it is. Yeah. I mean, you're always building to a specific scene or you're building to a specific fight scene, whether it's, you know, yeah. an the aesthetic thing or whether, yeah. <laughs> and, um, yeah. Are you ever just like, hey, just let me stay in the car the whole time? See. <laughs> I am like that a lot. I am like that. I'm just keep I'd, me in the car. The rock is out there. I don't want to get out yeah, and I, stand I, next I, to him. I don't want to slip on baby oil. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, can I ask a question? Hi. Uh, speaking of baby oil. Um, <laughs> so, uh, Vin, Mr. Diesel, I don't know if we want to be on a first name basis or not. Hey man, now we are. Okay, sweet. So, uh, Vin Diesel, Zoe Saldana, both of you have been action figures before. For Chris, I don't know if there was a Parks and Rec action figure, but maybe this is the first time you're an actual like action figure that's out there and kids play with. So, one, what's that feel like? And two, have you ever played with yourself? <laughs> oh, come on. I mean, Myself, by the way. <laughs> um, yeah, I, my my son was at Target and somehow <laughs> found a Groot doll. And then when my daughter wanted one, they said they were sold out and they didn't have any, any of the Targets and it became a big deal. And uh, it's a strange thing when you see a doll of yourself. It's very Twilight Zone. You imagine, you know, going to brush your teeth at night and opening up the cabinet and seeing nothing but Groot dolls. <laughs> it's freaky. It's a real freaky thing to see a doll of yourself. I mean, especially if you're a tree. <laughs> now, how did you guys, were, who were you acting with? Was it like a tennis ball thing or for, for Groot and... Uh, um What's the fox guy's name? What's that guy's name? The raccoon. The, the, the oh, raccoon. Fox. <laughs> the raccoon. Sorry. You, how dare you? Rocket. <laughs> he would, he'd blow your head off. <laughs> I know, I know, He would know. shoot a hole in your face. Um, no, no, no. Uh, you see, like, it really, like, it, it, the tech, like, the way it works technically, and, and I, not to bore you with all the, the what it takes to, to no make one's this gonna movie. be bored by technical stuff here. Uh, that's, <laughs> yeah. I guess it's probably it's probably true. It, it is pretty fascinating. You know, uh, it really depends on what the sh what the scene what the shot was uh, would depend uh, would would determine what we were acting opposite. So if we're doing a close up of Gamora and she's having an emotional scene with Groot where she looks at him and she's like having a real interaction and we need to capture that capture that magic you know right here, mm -hmm. then you'll have her. Uh, acting opposite an actor. It would either be Christian, who played the role of Groot on set, or Sean Gunn, uh, who has another role in the film as Craglin. It's, uh, oh, he was hilarious. Yeah, he's really great. And uh, um, he, James Gunn's brother, Sean, he's great, so good. And, and, you know, those characters were definitely born there on the stages when we were working. And they, those guys have a, had a, you know, pretty thankless thankless job and they're sort of the unsung heroes of the movie because they were there every single day in and out creating this stuff really just so that we could have organic performances opposite them so like when you go in for those money shots those magic emotional moments where you're having like for instance uh, Quill is reacting to to Rocket when he sees him in the prison for the first time and he's like he sees the cybernetic enhancements on his back he sees that this is a creature that's not not just a, a tough uh, you know little um, little guy with the machine gun but actually like a living breathing mm -hmm. creature who feels stuff and who's like probably lonely like you you develop empathy and that's all because I'm watching Sean walk in and essentially create that performance just so that I could react to it so like uh, depending on the, and, and then sometimes you'd have like an LED light or an eye line or if it's a big wide shot we might have it wasn't on nothing we at did all. have some tennis balls every there now was and time then. for tennis balls yeah and sometimes Chris had his own tennis ball and I had my own tennis ball yeah and they had separate trailers they kind of actually it <laughs> didn't get along. And so no, our started. tennis balls did not get along. Yeah, we'd have different eye lines. So, like, if, if this plant <clears throat> didn't exist right here, and, and we need to look like we're looking at it, I'd be looking at the young lady here in the black and, and rose dress. In between the, these two individuals. And I'd be looking somewhere over there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and Groot would be licking his shoulder. Yeah. <laughs> Now, when you were go when you were watching the stuff, were they like, did you accidentally hear the other guys? I am Groot. So we're like, turn those off. Never. I never heard any. I am Groot. I just. It was just wide open. I, it was a really special experience for me. 
because I was able to take my kids into the ADR booth. <laughs> and so my kids were, even before I saw the movie, my kids were already imitating both of them. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> my three-year-old son was saying, Star-Lord, man. <laughs> I mean, it was, and, and my daughter runs around acting like she's Gamora now, and they already know each other, so it's, it's a surreal thing. <laughs> Such a good experience. Such a, it's one of those, you all saw the movie? Yeah. Oh, so you all saw this movie. Oh, yeah, we, uh, we get to see stuff early around what here. What did you think of the movie? <laughs> <laughs> I call it a gift movie. I call it a gift movie because you have to gift it to someone. You want to share it with someone. You want to take every kid in your neighborhood to this movie. <laughs> <laughs> what do you, uh, get a question from this gentleman Awkward. who's waiting. Uh, first of all, congrats on Guardians 2. Hey, that's, thanks. That's awesome. Um, Already. So my question is, Vin, you came in a bit later, so you didn't is the press junket really how you're getting to know these guys? And are you going to be doing on-set stuff for two? Or uh, Very, very good question. Uh, I've known Zoe for many years. Um, so it was Zoe was kind of a comfort zone coming into this. I directed a web series, uh, some of the episodes of a web series that Vin created called um, The Ropes. My sister and I were, were directed three or four episodes of that. So that's how we, we know Vin and his family. And Chris, I met on the junket. I met, I met Brad. I met Chris before I met Bradley Cooper. I mean, I, literally, I met Bradley Cooper backstage at one of the talk shows. And uh, but I felt like I knew him because <laughs> I saw him in the ADR booth and I was playing off of him. But it is surreal. It's a, it's kind of a yeah. I play a tree. I mean, I, I, I guess there are no rules. How do you, you know? play a tree without seeming wooden? It's strange. I, I, I guess I'm oh. going for that wooden performance. I mean, right. I look at trees different. You gotta say, guys, you've seen the movie. You have to tell me you look at trees a little bit different. Like you're not so, my ass. Well, you're not so ashamed of your tree hugger parents anymore, are you? I mean, it's a new world. Did anyone plant a tree after they saw the movie? <laughs> not much to ask. Not much to ask. Let's take one from the, uh, a super nerdy one from the Dory here. Give every member of the team whatever weapons he or she wants who would win in a battle royale slash hunger game scenario and why. <laughs> Toss, part B, That's tossing like, the Avengers. <laughs> tossing the Avengers, now what? Let's just make this who would win in a fight, you guys are the Avengers. Are we, uh, do we get to use our spaceship? Yes. Because <laughs> Iron Man would be able, wouldn't be, I mean, like, I think. Well, he gets to wear his suit. He gets to wear his suit, yeah. right? But so, he yeah. can't take anybody with him in Thor either. Thor can only take, like, his girlfriend on a <laughs> ride. And that's only it. Natalie right? Portman, yeah. Yes. No it, does it take place on Earth or in space? In mm, space. In space? Yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we win. <laughs> we would the, win. The suit, you, you can... Well, we have more, yeah, we have... I think, I think the deciding factor would probably be Rocket, because, like, he would, you know, right. he, he would take Tony Stark's suit, apart, yeah. suit yeah. apart and, like, build, like, a nuclear bomb out of it or something. And then, yeah. <laughs> and then they also have a god, so... Yeah. You would obviously dismantle Thor. Yeah, right, he, he because uh, we also have a god. <laughs> <laughs> no, um... Star -Lord! <laughs> He's my daddy. <laughs> I mean, no, but I seriously guys... think that we would win. But it's not. Um... You're the deadly. You're, you're supposed to be the deadliest woman in the galaxy. So yeah, it's true. I, mean... it's true. I seriously think that we would win because they're all human. They're all Terran, um, except for Thor. Yeah. And um, you know, the, and and we are. Well, but it oh, depends. Oh, but you guys got the your Hulk own big guy, Ruffalo too. Comes in and he's such a nice guy. <laughs> Rocket would kill Bruce Banner. He would wait for the Hulk to stop being the Hulk. Okay, and all right, all right. And like slit Bruce Banner's throat, and then it would be done. Yeah. We, you guys are writing Cut the movie, you. right? Yeah. Now. Like, <laughs> yeah. Guardians movie. And There's going to be a totally crossover, and they all asses. die in the first three minutes. I'm sorry. <laughs> and, and then it just becomes Do like a ever, kind of buddy comedy between ever, uh, like, Groot start and Rocket. Do you guys ever start like pitching ideas like that to the director? That's what we're doing right now. Oh, okay. <laughs> I thought this was a creative this meeting. This is a pitch meeting. Yeah. Yeah. This is. This you guys, is. You're not you guys. This is all testing really well. Yeah, thank so. you. Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> we throw around ideas. We pitch ideas, but you know they don't listen to them. <laughs> <laughs> we like. Do you want to see like Avengers vs. Guardians? Yeah. 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 What do you think would happen? <laughs> Ready all at once. All at once, man. Yeah, everyone go. <laughs> well, first of all, Save I don't the know. Chant, man. <laughs> Guardians have got. I'm hooked on a feeling. <laughs> Let's take one from the gentleman over there. Um, so, Vin, I've heard you're really into Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> so, I have two questions. Yes. Uh -oh. What character do you play, and would you be willing to join our group? Uh, <laughs> you know, it's. Whenever anyone asks me to join their campaign, there's a good old feeling I have where I feel like, you know, I'm not alone in the world. <laughs> and it's okay to be a dweeb. Um, I, I played a lot of characters. And I played the, my most famous character you might have read about, which was my witch hunter, my half-draw witch hunter. The irony is I'm about to, next month, do a movie called the witch hunter, <laughs> kind of freaky. <laughs> I mean, I never thought in a million years when I was rolling that 20-sided die 20-something 20 years ago that Hollywood would make a movie about a witch hunter. But that's a, another story. Um, uh, and yet, how, where are you playing in, on the East Coast? Well, we actually do it over video chat. You are doing video chat. Yeah, so um, we've got one guy down in uh, North Carolina, and he will video in. And are you using modules? Or may, are you, are um, <laughs> it's mostly second edition rules, but they have some holdovers from the first edition. Um, so. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Just thinking about it. I mean, we played with play Unearth <laughs> Arcana. We played with everything. I mean, that's where the Witch Hunter. Witch Hunter wasn't created by Gary Gygax, as you know. It was the aftermarket books so that we were trying to incorporate and create new games and trying to create them. It was a special time. D&D <laughs> was a special time. <laughs> yeah, man, we might, that that. Yeah. we might have to get into that. We might have to get into that. I can get into that, man. <laughs> Do you know that Gary Gygax, as he... <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. I told you it was going to get dorky. Yeah. Split up into breakout sessions where everyone gets their own Guardian of the Galaxy. Well, I'll tell you later. It's very good. Chris, I have one for you. Um, there's, so try to look at you know the mythology of Star Lord, and it looks like there's a whole lot of different stories and uh, yeah. origin stuff. Did you read everything you could get your hands on, or were you like, no. I'm just going to read, <laughs> I'm just going to read the words on the script when the camera's on. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. It was somewhere. It was somewhere in between the two. I, like, it wasn't like, uh, you know. I think it takes a lot for me. And this is gonna sound crazy, but it was the same thing when I did uh, the movie Moneyball. There's a book that it's based on, and I remember reading the script, and I was like, this is just such a great version of this story. I don't want to come into this questioning, uh, questioning the script. I don't want to come in and say, well, you know, in fact. This this time is a little off because it just works so well as a story. I thought the same thing with this script. Um, a lot of the Guardians of the Galaxy, the incarnations of the Guardians of the Galaxy does, doesn't, don't include Star-Lord. Like the ones that I had coll happened, uh, coincidentally collected as a kid, they didn't have uh, Star-Lord in them. And so there were some Star-Lord comics out there, but for me what was important, what, the thing that grabbed me in the script that, in creating this character was that he and I are kind of the same person. I mean, we're both born in 1979, so in 1988 we were nine years old. And we both have all the same pop culture references and icons, which for him is like his his it's who he is i mean he was he was taken away from earth at nine years old and brought out into space and given an opportunity to, to be a, an adventurer and he's like sort of running from this traumatic thing that happened to him and so what he wants to do is just create a hero that he wants people to think that he is star lord and all of the everything he knows about life is based on the movies that i watched as a kid the movie the, the music that i listened to the dance moves that i knew it's like this, kid, this guy is basically what me as nine years old would want to be if I was given carte blanche to be an adventurer in space. So that's where I started mining for information, is like, what did I like? The Kevin Bacon line, that was, that was a, a result of collaboration, and Footloose, that was never in the script. Like, oh. these things like that are like, yeah, I loved like, Footloose, and I was like, when he's, she, that, she says she won't dance, maybe it should be this ideology. He like really yeah. looks at these movies as like the legends that create <laughs> him, you know? Because he's like, 
he's he's gotten he hasn't been to earth since he was nine you know so he gets to kind of be whoever he wants to be so that's really where i started kind of developing or where we collaborate collaborated developing who this guy would be is like just who i was at that age yeah when gamora says like just like kevin bacon i think that was like the biggest laugh yeah the theater <laughs> that's, awesome. that's amazing that, that that went in there because i was waiting to hear a little footloose on the soundtrack i was like yeah where's that song gonna yeah be? no did you did they plan all those songs out the soundtrack is amazing did you like know what the mixtape was going to be i knew yeah that was the first thing i requested after reading the script was i was like all right james send me this mixtape because you know, in the script, he had written specifically each song that would play in each scene, and that lasted throughout from the first script, from his first draft all the way to the end. Like those songs were in there and planned. So I made him send me the mixtape, which includes all of those songs plus many more, because I figured, you know, if you have like one cassette tape and it's all you listen to for 20 years, you're gonna, it's gonna become part of you, you know. So I listened to that thing. I mean, no less than a hundred times, but probably more than a hundred times. Wow. So in so in the sequel, we're gonna we're gonna hear that second mixtape. Yeah, we'll, hit, we'll, we'll hear awesome mix volume We two. noticed there was no scene where you'd like trying to unwind it with the pencil or like rewind yeah. it when it gets screwed up. I know. Yeah. Damn it. Um, true. These guys have a really busy day. Let's take one more if we can. Uh, so Thanos has already been introduced in Avengers and now he's been shown in Guardians, right? So are there any plans already being made for teaming up both the Avengers and the Guardians probably for the next version of the movie? Well, James Gunn has talked about that already. He's been pretty open about uh, a cross collaboration of Avengers. And is that what you asked? Yeah. Yeah. That's that's what I think I would want to see. I don't ever want to see the Guardians fight the Avengers. Yeah. Um, I want to see them sort of fighting together, maybe against Thanos, because I do believe that Thanos is sort of isn't Thanos like the overall enemy of everybody, so right? You don't know. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I think <laughs> I think I think like isn't he your dad? <laughs> he is my dad. It depends on which way they want to go, right? Like what I think is so cool about the Guardians of the Galaxy is it opens up the universe. Mm. So like, instead of like taking these new things and bringing them right back to the stories we already know, I think it's like open it up, like see what other corners of the galaxy we can discover. Bring in characters like that weren't in, you know bring in characters that were from some of the Guardians of the Galaxy, like explore Yondu, explore the Yon the origins more of these characters. And if it is Thanos, explore the Infinity Gauntlet. Like, how many of these st stones is he gonna get? And and who does that open up? Like, instead, the, the universe expands, you know? And looking out on it, we wanna take these characters and bring them into the Avengers, and we wanna, like, have them be all in the same movie together. It's like, no, fuck that. Make fucking 100 movies, you know what I mean? Yeah! <laughs> if they end up crossing over, great. <laughs> Are we out of time? Okay. Guys, I've been told that we are out of time officially. Please thank oh, our oh. beloved guests for joining us. <laughs> Thanks, Mark. <laughs> thank you, Mark. Thank you, Todd. <laughs> One more. Why no post credit scene? There is a post-credit scene. What? There is a post-credit scene, and it's not its not going to be in any of the advanced screenings, none of the press screenings. Oh. It is. Hey, don't groan. <laughs> well, we missed it. You want the post-credit scene? It's going to cost you 13 bucks. Oh. Get out and see this. Maybe a little more in IMAX, and, and you'll see it. And But I know what it is, and no one else does. <laughs> yes, I do. I don't even know what it is. And it's going to blow your mind. Now so go, go back. Just if, if for anything, go back. Just I'm going to sneak oh, into a theater at the end of this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, once again, thank you guys so much for joining us. We really appreciate it.